So, the topic today is on forgiveness. Who's heard of it, okay? Uh, we can also call this relationship management. You know, when you hear good advice, but if you have to follow it, it's like two completely different things. It's a lot easier to talk about how you should forgive someone. It's a lot harder to do. Does anybody have any, any experience with this? Yeah, show of hands. Yeah, pretty much everybody, right? <laughs> so, I'm sure, now that I've said the word, everyone's thinking of somebody, right? They're all thinking of somebody. For a second, we have to think about, you know, have I actually have I actually forgiven that person for that for that thing that they said or that thing that they did? Maybe they even did it on purpose, right? Someone comes up immediately in your mind, and then you're like, wait, wait, I gotta I gotta think about this for a second. I gotta reconsider the events, you know, replay some things in my mind, and then ask, have I really forgiven that person? And is it even important that I do forgive that person? Now for Christians, I've got some bad news, okay? The bar is raised. For us to be unwilling to forgive somebody as a believer is against God's will, as we're about to find out. And the Lord himself, that is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, specifically talks about forgiveness at a couple of points. And I mean, there's more than a couple, we're gonna see those. And now I've got also some, uh, maybe it's enlightening, but it's a little bit sad. For the unsaved, they're going to live down to their job description. Do you know people who walk around mad all the time? Do you know people who are just unforgiving? And frankly, not only are they unforgiving, they relish in their unforgiveness. Which I, I'm kind of like trying to stifle a laugh. It's actually really sad. Uh, I've met people that they're just focused on trying to get this person back. I mean, really? That's what we're living for? <laughs> Obviously, as believers, we want to avoid that trap, right? And it's all, and another point is like, they don't even know, right? They don't even know. They don't have a frame of reference that says you should forgive that person. 1 John 4.19 says in the New King James, we love him because he first loved us. In a very similar vein, we can choose to exercise our ability to forgive under the power and assistance of the Holy Spirit and in a Christ-honoring way, forgive and release others from the wrongs they've done to us. So in a, in a way, do we do anything to deserve God's love or His merit? No, okay? We did not do anything. We can't merit God's love. His love demonstrated to us through Christ and Christ's sacrificial death, ultimate expression of love, his death on the cross. Similarly, I can't earn God's love. He bestows that on me and on you. And in a mirror image, we should therefore be willing to forgive others as we've been forgiven for so much. I wrote here, we should be willing to forgive even if the other side isn't calling for it or if they especially don't deserve it. And think about this, they might not even know you're burning up and they forgot that it even happened, okay? One of my oldest and best friends lives in my hometown of Taft, California. His dad, for 15 years, never visited him, who lives in the same town. All the way through a growing up and off to college for a grandson and through my friend's two bouts with cancer, his dad never showed up.
the entire episode as uh, I, I'm very happy to say that this particular friend I led to the Lord many years ago and I, I was putting this sermon together and I'm like before I talk about this I need to text him and ask him what do you think I'm gonna ask my friend have you forgiven your dad and he has he has could you imagine and as I, as he says and I agree the entire episode defies an explanation and to top it off his dad up and moves with his step family to Arkansas never said a word as I say a lot of times in my family didn't say nothing to nobody just moved out how do you forgive that but I confirm he has forgiven his dad he just say I can't explain it and I agree with him we can't explain it so let's turn to the word of life let's go to Colossians 3 8 for those of you who brought a Bible also Bible apps are acceptable Colossians 3 8 actually I'm just going to use my app because it's going to be a lot faster I use the uh, <clears throat> for those of you that pay attention to this kind of thing the olive tree Bible app Colossians 3 verse 8 But now you yourselves are to put off all these. So here's your list. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy language. Next we're going to turn to Titus 3, verses 1 through 8. Uh, there's only one verse here that I really want to focus on, but not wanting to rip things out of context and confuse the matter we'll read the whole passage from Titus chapter 3 verses 1 through 8 remind them instructions from Paul to his protege Titus who's in charge of a church Paul says remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey to be ready for every good work to speak evil of no one to be peaceable gentle showing all humility to all men for we ourselves were also once foolish disobedient deceived serving various lusts and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another well they had quite a crowd in those days but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior that having been justified by his grace we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life this is a faithful saying and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be maintaining should be careful to maintain good works these are good and profitable you can see how Paul, I mean, his advice here transcends what I would just call the petty idea of not being willing to forgive somebody. 2 Corinthians 5.17. <clears throat> go to Romans and then shift to the right. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians rather. chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come Continuing from right here on my notes. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And get this. He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Uh, 
I'm just gonna say we, we're not gonna wiggle out of that one as, as believers, okay? And so just in case you're harboring doubts about your ability to forgive or your willingness to forgive, I, I hope that you're willing to forgive. Can you imagine, after reading these three passages, now you get the idea, so let's just pretend for a second. I'm not going to forgive so-and-so. You don't know what they did to me. Okay. Is your justification for not forgiving somehow higher than God's law, right? In other words, your, your standards are higher than God's? No. Can you imagine your own expectations for the conditions to obtain forgiveness higher than what God himself requires? No possible way. Let's look at uh, Matthew 18. For those of you who know about the parable in Matthew, the parables, and the parable of the unforgiving servant or the unmerciful servant. <clears throat> Verse 21, Matthew 18, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? <laughs> you know? And Jesus said, yeah, Peter, when, you, when someone sins against you the eighth time, you don't have to forgive them anymore after that, right? Jesus, Peter, as usual, in his bravado, thought he was going to score some points with the Lord. Jesus said to him, Peter, be quiet and go sit down. No, he didn't say that. Jesus said to him, I, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. And then the Lord goes on, verse 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. We can easily say that he couldn't repay that. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when the same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. In other words, a fraction of what this guy had just been forgiven. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him. Now you would think, the guy would say, wow, this looks familiar. But no. How, how much? A hundred denarii. Which yeah. is, how much is that equivalent to? Five cents. Oh, I don't know why. Not much. <laughs> so somebody, By comparison. Somebody look it up on their uh, smartphone. hundred denarii. <laughs> Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. Okay, we'll pause right here because this reminds me of Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also, also reap. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me and should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? Question mark. And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. That's pretty big. <clears throat> I'm not going to go so far as to say, and it's not, it's not built, there's not a biblical case to be made, that once you've committed yourself to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that if you struggle with forgiveness, or you're in this moment where you're unwilling to forgive, that you've somehow canceled out your salvation. That's not what the Lord is saying. But what he is saying, if someone is really hardened and won't forgive, I'm gonna ask, is that person actually saved? Does that person have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Does that person recognize how much they have been forgiven in the eyes of the Lord and in God? If the answer is yes, then you should be working on this. We're gonna to get to that. It's not, it's not something that's easy to do in some of these hard cases. 
Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 6, backing up from 18. Chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. A little bit like a scene out of the Alfred Hitchcock movie. <laughs> Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, from the Sermon on the Mount, if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Let's take a look at the Lord's Prayer. Backing up to verse 9. Same chapter. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> so, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, shifting to the right. Sometimes it helps to just memorize. Everyone's got this, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Th uh, Corinthians, and then I know Ross has a little acronym for remembering the, the epistles, but I use GEPSI, it's G-E-P-C, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, okay. So why does that matter? Because if you use an old Bible, <laughs> you'll know where to turn. So going over here to Galatians chapter five, beginning in verse 19. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians packed packed with good material yeah. and not that long but I defy you to try to read one in less than 20 minutes it, it takes time because they're rich and they shouldn't be sped through uh, okay verse 19 we're talking about being in step with the spirit walk by the spirit verse 19 now the works of the flesh are evident sexual immorality impurity sensuality idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy fits of anger rivalries dissensions divisions envy drunkenness orgies and things like these that's quite a list this is a couple thousand years ago remember i warn you as i warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, so let's pause for station identification. When you're wondering, is so-and-so a believer? I thought they were a believer. Or, I didn't think they were a believer, but they act like a believer. I hope we have that problem, all right? But we're asking ourselves, is this person a believer? This is where you apply the fruit test. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love, peace. I'm sorry. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Do they pass the fruit test? <laughs> nobody knows for sure we're just trying to use some discernment use some wisdom let's look at the fruit test <clears throat> okay so I understand I understand I'm supposed to forgive I get it but what about toxic people what about people who are toxic what does that even mean well, let's just easily say we could do a sermon on toxic people. In fact, I could probably say before Christ, I was a toxic person. It's possible. Some scenarios and some applications on forgiveness. What if the person I need to forgive isn't even alive? This is a lot easier than the next one we're going to talk about. How are we? Oh, lots of time. 
Uh, if you're harboring unforgiveness towards someone who's passed away, acknowledge it in prayer. And ask God to allow you to genuinely forgive the person for the wrong that they did. And ask, I mean, it's, you know, James said you have not because you ask not. Do you want to feel better about that? Then ask God to help you feel better about that. Ask God to help you forgive and to feel better. Why is that? Why bother with that? Because you have a ministry, that's why. <laughs> Each and every person here in Christ has a ministry. Are you gonna go home and fix lunch? That's a ministry. Are you gonna clean up the kitchen when you're done? That is also a ministry. Are you gonna drive someone to the store? Are you gonna help someone with homework? Are you gonna sweep off the porch? These are ministries to your family, to your friends, to your loved ones. Are you gonna preach the gospel? Are you gonna to witness to friends? Are you gonna read the Bible? Are you gonna hold devotions? Are you gonna grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? These are all ministries. If you're burdened and weighed down with unforgiveness, guess what? Something in your ministry is not gonna happen. Ask God to help you move on. You have a ministry in the Lord that you need to fulfill. John 14, 13. For, for those of you who'd like to memorize Bible verses, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Beseech the Lord in prayer with a right heart and he will make it happen. Why is that? Because it's going to extend his kingdom because you're going to be active in your ministries. Persist in this, okay? It's not easy, and maybe you haven't even thought about it, thinking about it. What if the person I need to forgive is me? Who has a I need to forgive me problem? Okay, yeah. I have bad news. You can't forgive yourself. Because your, your desire for forgiveness, guess where that's coming from? God, through the Holy Spirit, convicting you of things that you did, that were stupid, dumb, wrong, sinful, etc., etc. God is a righteous judge, according to many of the Psalms. And I'll just refer to Psalm 50, verse 6, where it talks about God being a righteous judge. Psalm 32, 6, one of David's Psalms. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And God told me to go pound sand? No. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. God alone forgives. First John 1, 9 through 10. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have no sin, we're a liar and the truth is not in us okay we're talking about healthy maintenance of your sin before god if you're right with god you can think to yourself god has forgiven me i have no reason to not forgive myself i'm already forgiven and and i'm just trying to point out that your own forgiveness you could say oh i forgive myself but you're gonna have this nagging feeling in your conscience that things are not right because you need to confess these before God and be forgiven. <clears throat> Did you know that Satan, among his many names, is also known as the accuser of the brethren? From Revelation, accuses him before our God day and night. So please understand that if you've confessed your sin and repented before God, then you're no longer guilty. And you can consider the mental rut of quote unquote feeling unforgiven. That's the trick of the devil to keep you down and to keep you out, to keep you uninvolved, unengaged, and frankly unprofitable to the Lord. And to prevent you from fulfilling your ministry, prevent you from realizing your gifts. Okay, so why forgive? because Jesus commanded that we do so. God has reconciled himself, 
reconciled us to himself, however undeserving we are. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, unless any man should boast. <clears throat> should we have a higher standard than God when it comes to forgiveness? No. Realize and fulfill your ministry, whatever it may be. Do not allow a spirit of unforgiveness to corrode your love, joy, peace, and your security in Christ. Do not be in bondage to a spirit of unforgiveness. The end. Okay. <clears throat> Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you for this message. Thank you that you've really uh, explained a ton about how we're supposed to think about a wide range of issues from the scriptures and Lord as we've been admonished to be in the scriptures let us be in the scriptures let us grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ by immersing ourselves in the Bible Lord I pray for a fire in each heart here today for the scriptures for the learning for right thinking for knowing how to rightly divide the truth, how to apply it to our lives, how to experience the joy, the peace, the happiness that just transcends our current reality, Lord, that gives us joy unspeakable, pleasures unspeakable, to be before you in prayer, to be before you in the word. It's an honor and it's a blessing. <clears throat> Help each one here with this, Lord. I ask in Jesus' name. And Lord, it may be that there are some here today that don't even know you. And they might be saying to themselves, what, what are we really talking about here? And Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And John 3, 16, that whosoever will believe in you will not perish but have everlasting life. If any here today want to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior with eyes closed and heads bowed, please raise your hand. Okay, praise God. No hands raised, Lord. For us believers here, if any have struggled with this issue, I'm about to pray over this and and ask really that the bonds of Satan just be shattered into a million pieces if any of like you know what this is like right up my alley and I, I'm gonna admit it please raise your hand <clears throat> father for those hands raised and for everyone else who in their heads might be raising their hands I pray in Jesus Christ's holy and powerful name that these bonds are smashed and shattered from the lives of these loved ones that we can fulfill our ministry that we could move on to bigger and better things, that we could forgive, release, and let go.